Canada's critical infrastructure, our electricity grids, even our elections, are now under constant and increasing cyber attack from countries like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. That's part of the headline from today's release of the National Cyber Threat Assessment from Canada's top cyber security agency, the CSE, the Communications Security Establishment. And these attacks are getting more sophisticated and more dangerous, and they're also targeting you. So, how do we protect ourselves from all these threats? Let's find out. The head of the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity, Scott Jones, joins us. Always good to see you, sir. Um, let's just try to give people a, a sort of a 30,000 foot view. What are the most dangerous cyber threats to Canada and what exactly could they do to us? Well, thanks for having me. And I think uh, one of the things we really wanted to emphasize that the threat we all need to be facing is the threat of cyber crime. Uh, whether you're a citizen, a small and medium business, or a large scale organization in Canada, uh, cyber criminals are targeting all, each and every one of us. And certainly the report then goes from there and does talk about other threats, the threats from the states, as you mentioned, um, but also the fact that the internet um, and the connectivity that we're seeing is embedded in pieces of our society that we simply, um, as individuals, are typically unaware of. And we need to start thinking about this now as this is our world, is the internet, the internet and cybersecurity. And the, the report is meant to say, we can do something about this. We can take action. We don't need to be scared, uh, but we need to do something about it. Okay, so I'm going to get to the action in a minute. A lot of folks think, okay, the, you know, someone is attacking our electricity grid. Uh, you know, we've all been a, subjected to phishing and cyber crimes and those scam calls. Let's just put that aside. Can you explain how, what the consequence could be about a cyber attack on an electricity grid? Like, what would that mean and who's doing that? Well, absolutely. One of the things we, we did point out, this has happened to other places in the world, but we're not seeing that happen here. Uh, we say that it's highly, it's highly unlikely, absent of um, international conflict, that anything would be directed at Canada. But we need to be prepared now for a threat we may face in the future. So what this could mean is uh, technology is, is converging. And so things that used to sit independent and not be connected to the internet are now being connected. So the control systems for our electrical system, meaning um, whether or not the power lines are turned on or off, whether or not generators are turned on and turning or shut down and not generating electricity, or a dam is open or not. Um, all of those are now controlled through operational technology, which is being connected to the internet and internet technology. And so that's one of the threats we said is you could conceivably turn off power. You could disrupt the flow of electricity. You could disrupt the flow of our water system as well. Um, critical infrastructure is, is interconnected and it's things we depend on. So we need to start, we need to be working on this and we have been, but we need to continue to work on this together to address these threats before they become a real threat to Canada. Right, I should point out in your report, you talk about even Health Canada has said it, you know, there are ways that cyber attack can affect people's pacemakers, their diabetic medicine. So uh, this stuff gets real uh, sophisticated. You also talk in the report about the disinformation campaign that's trying to discredit Canadian politicians. Has that happened? Can you give us an example? So we certainly have, and if um, that we, we've published other reports, the cyber threats to Canada's democratic process, for example, um, and then an update in 2017 and then an update in 2019, uh, where we talked about misinformation, but also uh, trying to influence, and we pointed out a couple examples targeting uh, specific politicians. Um, but it happens every day now. It, this is something where it's just constant wow. uh, misuse uh, or misinformation uh, on the internet. And this is where we're saying, look, we need to start turning to authoritative sources. In the context of the pandemic, uh, we're saying, look to the public health agencies for your facts on COVID for vaccine um, and be cyber literate, knowing what's out there. Um, the fact is we can all write whatever we want on Twitter. Um, we can all write whatever we want on social media platforms, any one of them. Um, but go to the go to the source. Uh, look at what they're work, look at what's right. there. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Um, and if it doesn't feel right, look for an authoritative source of information. Well, it's interesting because you say they're trying to sow distrust the, these malevolent forces. You also write state-sponsored actors will almost certainly continue to conduct commercial espionage against Canadian businesses, academia, and governments to steal Canadian intellectual property and proprietary information. So our businesses are getting targeted. Well, absolutely. And earlier this year, in the context of the pandemic, um, we saw Canadian vaccine providers targeted by, and we called out Russia, uh, along with our allies in the United States and the United Kingdom for this, to say this is too far. Um, saying you are targeting now a, critical, a piece of critical infrastructure, but also something that's critical to our health um, for that espionage and for that theft of information. 
Uh, and that's something where we, we are seeing that happen. We, it's something that's been happening for a number of years uh, where we have called it out and this is something that we just have to say enough is enough. Yeah. Uh, and also work on strengthening ourselves against this type of activity. Okay, so just last question. What do we do? So you've got Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. Those are state sponsors that you talk about that. And then there's all sorts of other actors. What do we do to stop this? So this is actually one of those areas where we're making it easy for the actor. Basics matter in cybersecurity. Uh, and something as simple as updating our software, uh, is, it can make a huge difference and it makes us not vulnerable. Making sure we don't, as citizens, we don't reuse passwords, but that we secure the things we care about most, things like our banking information, et cetera. Um, and we publish things for small and medium organizations that say, that, that gives simple instructions for those organizations that they can follow. Things that are affordable for a small and medium organization that apply 80% of the benefit, but with 20% of the cost. And then as citizens, if you have the option to turn on something called multi-factor authentication, uh, that actually makes a big difference and it makes it hard for cyber mm. criminals. But those are basic things. Um, and if people would like to see more tips, get cyber safe is a great source for individual Canadians. Yeah, get cyber safe. You got to do it. It's coming and it's coming fast and it's sophisticated. Uh, great to have you on the program, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.